the more I talk about sexuality and the more I talk about how Jesus continually is setting me free in that area and the more I talk about the dangers, the depths of pornography, masturbation, sinning against your own body and the more I talk about the relief God has given me, the power God has given me in that area, how it's used for God, his design, whether you're single, whether you're married and how to use it for the glory of God, the more results I get in my life, the more transformation I get in my life, the more power I receive in my life and the more I'm set free in that area and the more I succeed and thrive in that area. Your sexuality is a gift, but it's also an engine but it's also a sacred power. It's also a prized possession. Okay? When you learn how to use that engine to produce under God's will, when you allow the Holy Spirit to maintain your sexuality, especially for single people, and you learn how to use that, your heart, your mind, your belly, your desire, your being, your, when you learn how to use the entirety of your being to worship the Lord, to honor Jesus, to bless God, to bless people, when you learn how to infuse all of it into intimacy through scripture, through the Holy Spirit, through love, through admiration, and you learn how to honor the beauty and admire the softness, and you learn how to reverence the power of God in your sexuality, in your intimacy, in your spiritual being, you're going to see and you're going to recognize the altar of your Heavenly Father and all the candles that are inside of you. The power that's inside of you is going to unify because you no longer see your sexuality as a curse. And you know, because you see it as a curse, you use it to defeat your own self. You use it to bind your own self. When it's a gift from God, you poison it with our negative thinking towards it because we're frustrated because we lack knowledge on how to open it and use it for God's purposes. The flow of sexuality, the energy of sexuality, the desire of sexuality, it's all towards intimacy. You desire a closeness. And when you don't have bonds, when you don't have close relationships, when you don't have warmth, when you don't have touch in your life, that desire is going to cry out. And it's going to be met. And it's going to be in ungodly circumstances, that desire is going to be attempted to be met in the wrong way. Then you're going to go fire up your computer, watch porn, you're going to masturbate because you're not being fulfilled in that area God's way through his relationship, through union, through family, through divine orientation, through prayer, through worship, that all satisfies your sexuality, your intimacy, your intimate desire. That is an engine of love that surpasses all other powers. So when you learn to use it as a gateway, because if you avoid its usage, it's still going to be in a continual effect and it's still going to be used whether you want it or not. Whether you want oxygen or not, it's going to be there for you to breathe. Whether you want your brain, your mind or not, it's going to be there for you to process, to live and think. Your sexuality is there for a reason. Much bigger than just having sex. It is an engine of potent infinite, unfathomable, intimate power. And when you learn how to direct that desire, not towards a image, not towards lust, not towards sex, but towards the love, the vision, the beauty, the honor, the reverence, and your heart, you're going to experience an intimacy with people, with Christ, with God, with your Savior, with people, with your relationships, with your ministry, with your focus, with your single life that you've never felt before. Sexuality is used to open up your heart, the gates of your heart. It is an engine. It is a key. It is a tool. So if I begin to feel horny or I begin to feel a desire, 
I take that desire instead of focusing towards pornography, where we've all been trained to just focus our sexuality towards having sex with another human being. But when you learn how to train, you've been given the power to transform your sexuality. You have tr in Christ, you have transformation power. When you learn how to use that energy to flow into your heart, to flow upward, the information it possesses, the knowledge it has, the substance, the precious substance scripture talks about flowing inside of you in your heart. And you learn how to use that engine towards admiring people. And then you learn how to infuse the power of your heart into your mind. And you use it in your prayer life. And you use it in your when you're praying in the spirit. And you use it in your declaration. And you use it as strength. And you use it as power for your ministry. And you use it as vitality for your workplace. And you use it as an open heaven, an open atmosphere to benefit the nations. The devil's going to have a fit. Because now you've learned the infinite power you possess as a human being. Now you know how to use it. Now lust has no power over you. Pornography, masturbation, you've mastered that realm, okay? Masturbation bows before you. Pornography bows before you because it, reveren it reverences the kingship that you possess in Christ Jesus. Now you are beginning to not just read about that kingship, you are walking in that kingship power. Your sexuality, your intimacy is a powerhouse. And it is infused in pure love of God. When you begin to walk in that, not just learn about that, not just read about that, not just think about that, experience and walk in that, pornography has no power over you. You have now learned how to use that desire to magnify and glorify God and release his beauty and salvation to this earth. Now you're going to walk, be walking in a level of power. And every day I'm growing in this. I'm learning in this. And I am being set free beyond my imagination. But I am experiencing power. I'm learning how to use my desire for God. I'm learning how to take hold of every thought. And I'm learning to honor my sexuality. I'm learning to use my prayer life and speak the blessings of God over my sexuality. It is a rose. It is a formula. It is a heavenly orchestra. It is a divine melody. It is a sequence that triggers the events of the heavenly father into the adobe of Christ, into the music and power and beauty, into the rose of Sharon. And I'm learning how to use my sexuality as a divine poem in my prayer life. And I'm learning how to use it towards intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I'm learning different types of love. Love isn't just hugging somebody, having sex with somebody. I'm learning how to just lay on the Holy Spirit and just use my silence, my inner being and a pure focus, my sexuality, my heart, my emotions, my mind, my thought, my feeling, my life, my dedication, my soul. And I'm learning how to just let it rest on the Holy Spirit and cover the Holy Spirit in love. And I'm learning how to use it to magnify God in different strength. And I'm learning how to, you know, because when you don't release your sperm, whatever it is, and you allow that to build, it turn, it, you begin to feel strength in your body because that stuff is powerful. And when you learn how to use that strength as structures of power to worship God, to get the release in your praise through your sweat, through your energy, through your strength, through giving God all the praise, now you've just found a way of intimacy to receive pleasure, to use your sexuality to receive godly pleasure. See, nobody wants you to know this. The devil don't want you to know this. The spirit of religion doesn't want you to know this because if you know this, you're going to be free. Not only are you, see, it's not just about being free. Not only if you know this, not only are you going to be free, you're going to start walking in power beyond human imagination. Okay? So I just want to share that. And I pray to God, I'm, I'm going to be always, I'm going to be talking a lot about sex and pornography and how you overcome it and what God is doing in my life, I'm going to be talking. This is going to be a series. It's going to be, it's going to launch. It's going to be a mini series and people are going to be set free in the name of Jesus. Demons are going to bow down. That devil, those demons behind pornography, they are going to be bowed down. Pornography is going to be shut off as I speak about it. Things are going to be in prison. It's going to be not tolerated in the name of Jesus. I hate that spirit. I know what it's like to suffer in that area. So be free in Jesus name.